All right. Straight up now to the WTA where with Ashley Batsy announcing her retirement, it is inevitable there would be a change at the top of the WTA ranking. Short tech eliminates any doubt she belongs there at 20. She is the youngest player to make her debut at number one since Caroline Wozniacki on October 11th, 2010. Short tech currently holds a 1,736 point lead over a second rung Barbara Kregikova. In other notable moves, Paolo Vadosa, semi finalist in Indian Wells and a quarter finalist in Miami, moved to a career high ranking number three this week. She started the month ranked number seven. A finalist in Miami, Naomi Osaka, moved from number 77 to number 35, climbing 42 sports this week, the biggest jump among this week's top 100. After an eight week absence from the top 10, American returns to the top 10. Her name, Daniel Collins, leaping three sports to a career high number eight. Now, to the ATP where Carlos Alcaraz moved up of five sports, the biggest winner with the rising Spanish star continuing to climb the ATP rankings following his title run at the Miami Open where he became the youngest champion in the event's history. Entering the South Florida event one year ago, Alcaraz had yet to break into the top 100. The 10-year-old is now knocking on the door of the top 10 after a historic Miami run in which he defeated three current members of that elite group. He's now at a career high number 11. Great Britain's Cameron Norrie makes his top 10 debut after reaching the last 16 in Miami where he fell to eventual finalist Casper Ruud. His 26 earned that distinction with the help of his Deray Beach stars in February when he beat Riley Opelka in the final. He's now moved into the top 10 on the notable move. So Francesco Serendolo rise 52 places to a career high ranking of number 51. Memel Kekmanovic moved to a career number 38, while Tanasi Kokinakis moved 12 sports now at a career high ranking number 85. Now to golf, where Tiger Woods returning from injury to play in the Masters this week would be the greatest thing for golf, according to Patrick Cantley, while Webb Simpson in his sister five time champion can contend for another green jacket. Woods practice at Augusta National on Monday. As the golfing world awaits his game-time decision on whether or not to compete in a first major tournament since suffering career-threatening leg injuries in a car crash last February. Along with fans who packed the grounds on Monday to watch Woods practice, his fellow professionals appear genuinely enthused by the possibility of the 46-year-old team up on Thursday. Currently, who played under Woods' uh, captaincy at the 2019 President's Cup attempted to explain why the 15-time major winner's presence means so much to his peers. The last of all 15 major titles came at Augusta in 2019, with that victory seen as a major upset following several back surgeries and a series of personal problems away from the course. Whether or not Woods will compete, the Masters in Augusta will be confirmed later today. Now to the NBA where Brooklyn Net star Kevin Durant says he believes his team season got derailed when he injured the MCL in his left knee in mid-January. Durant injured the MLC in his left knee during a January 15th win over the New Orleans Pelicans and had to be over one and a half months while rehabbing the injury. During his rehab, the Nets were 27-15 at the time and still playing with Karen Iving on a part-time basis because of the New York COVID-19 vaccination mandate went on an 11-game losing streak and were 15-17 in Durant's absence. The Nets also traded James Harden and Paul Millsap to the Philadelphia 76ers just before the trade deadline in February for Ben Simmons, Seth Corey, Andrew Drummond, and two future first-round picks. Even after getting Duran back on March 3rd and getting Ivy back full-time on March 27th after New York Mayor Eric Adams pulled back the city's vaccination requirements for professional athletes and performance, the Nets have to find a rhythm. The Nets sit in 10th place in the Eastern Conference with four regular season games left to play, which would mean they would have to win two games to make the playoffs if the current standings hold. Now to the Premier League with Arsenal's hopes of securing a top four Premier League finish this season were dealt a huge blow as the below par Vistas suffered a 3 defeat against a rampant Crystal Palace as Sellers Park on Monday. Arsenal were put to the sword in the first half by the clinical host with goals from uh, forwards, Gene Felipe Mateta, and of course, uh, Jordan Ayew giving Palace a deserved 2 new lead at the interval. The Gunners improved after the break with uh, Emil Speedrow 
and Matt Rodigan missing big chances to get their team back in the match. Their wastefulness proved costly as Wilfred Zaha put the game to bed with a penalty 16 minutes from time. Total Moss Wolves 5 uh, 1 home victory over Newcastle United on Sunday means they are fourth ahead of their North London rivals and goal difference, having played a game more. The scoreline has set a spark, they're not flatter. An impressive Palace who continue to improve on the front Arsenal captain Patrick Vera with the victory moving them up to ninth. And that's it on Sports Wrap Up. We'll get talking after now. Stay right here with us.